Hi, everyone. My name is Sonia, and recently, everybody around me has been convinced that I'm mentally ill. So everything started when I was working in a stock exchange office. I was making good money, and I got to work with famous people. It was all great. I had a best friend in the office named Bridget, and I got to go home every night to my loving fiancé, Drew. That was until one night when things started to get extremely weird. Drew began calling me nonstop, worried about how little I was home. His texts and calls were starting to drive me insane. I got that he was concerned, but his behavior made hardly any sense. But it wasn't just my fiancé. I noticed that my best friend Bridget was behaving really weirdly. She started showing up to work in really expensive cars, wore only designer clothes, and her face looked like a doll from all the plastic surgery she'd gotten. When I asked her where she had gotten all this money, she said, I'll tell you when the time is right. So, I did something I shouldn't have. I snuck into Bridget's office one day when she wasn't at work. The thought of uncovering her secret was just too tempting. About five minutes in, I had barely found anything and I was starting to feel crazy. I had even sniffed her dirty shirt in her office closet, thinking I'd smell a rich man's cologne. But it smelled like it hasn't been washed in years. Ew! Finally, I found a paper. And what was on it? changed my opinion of Bridget. She had been stealing money from her clients for the past few weeks, and not just 20 bucks here or there. It had been hundreds of thousands of dollars. But what was most shocking was that at the end of my list, I saw my name and credit card number, and I wasn't even one of her clients. She was stealing from my tab too. Without even thinking, I brought the paper to my boss. He told me they would call the police and they'd launch an investigation. The next day, Bridget came into my office to chat. She gave me my pads that she had found on her office floor. She knew I used the silly pink pads with flowers on them. Other than being embarrassed, I knew in that instant it was over. She was going to know it was me who told on her. The next thing I knew, the police officers stormed the room and were putting her in handcuffs. She screamed at me, telling me I was going to pay for what I did. It sent a chill down my spine, but I knew she couldn't do anything. A few days later, as I was coming home from work, a huge guy dressed in all black started following me. I changed sides of the streets and watched as he changed sides with me. When I started walking faster, so did he. My heart started beating out of my chest. I was terrified, and before I knew it, I had made a wrong turn into a dark alley with only one exit. The man kept walking toward me. I scrambled around a corner trying to get away. Who knew what he would do to me? I tried to squeeze under a sharp chain fence to escape, but my hips got stuck. I could hear him walking closer and closer to me as I struggled to get out. I couldn't die here. Finally, I managed to pry the fence up just enough to squeeze my body, but my lower part got stuck. Was I going to die because of my curves? I pushed the hardest I could until I passed through, but it completely ripped the front of my shirt open. I walked home covering my chest, embarrassed and terrified. I wanted Drew to comfort me, but instead he started yelling, asking why my shirt was torn apart. Someone tried to hurt me. I thought that these words would stop Drew from being angry at me, but it only made him go crazier. So I mumbled nervously, a hippo attacked me. I don't know how that came out, but he totally saw through my lie. I was stressed when I walked into work the next morning. Lucky for me, my boss said he was going to send me to a conference a few hours away where I would have to stay in a hotel. I would have a chance to get away from the creepy stalker. But when I arrived at the conference, things were really tense. I tried talking to clients and other stock exchange workers, but all of them looked at me like I was a ghost. I started second-guessing everything I was doing. Did my breath smell? Had I said something stupid? By the second day, people had started speed walking away from me whenever I came near them. It was like I had the plague. People were actually afraid to come near me. I couldn't take it anymore. I cornered someone and asked her what was going on. Through tears, she told me, he said if we talk to you, he'll hurt us. He said doing business with you would ruin us and that you can't be trusted. When I asked her who, she pointed out the window into the courtyard. Sitting there was none other than the stranger who had followed me in the alley. I felt my blood run cold. He had followed me all the way to this conference? Bridget was really willing to go that far? Even from her jail cell? I had to get out of there, and fast. 
I ran towards the elevators, desperate to hide in my room for the rest of the day. Of course, I heard heavy footsteps behind me. I could see the stalker rushing down the hallway after me. I banged on the elevator button, trying so hard to get out of there, but the elevator was too slow. Finally, it arrived, and I dove inside. The doors closed behind me just as the man reached them. For the rest of the day, I paced in my room, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Had Bridget told the man to get me, or worse? Every time I looked out the peephole, I held my breath and saw the man was walking by. I realized that I needed to get out of there and soon, if I went back home, maybe I could go to the police about what was going on. I would call Drew in the morning and tell him I was coming home. As I laid down in my bed, I felt something hard inside my pillow. I reached inside and pulled out a microphone. My heart dropped. The man had been in my room. In a panic, I searched the rest of the room. I pulled out microphone after microphone and dozens of cameras. I finally had some evidence, but at that moment, I realized my room wasn't safe. I ran down to the lobby, sobbing. I told the manager I was being stalked and someone had bugged my room. The cops came and escorted me up to the room. I felt totally relieved. This was going to be the end of all the drama with Bridget. But when we entered the room, there was nothing there. All the microphones, all the cameras, they were all gone. That's when I lost it. I started screaming about how they had to believe me. I told them I was being stalked, that I was in danger. I blocked the hall, telling them that they couldn't leave me. That's when the medical team showed up. They tried to get me to calm down, but I fought against them. One of them grabbed me and slapped handcuffs on me. They tossed me in the back of the car and brought me to a facility. When they threw me in that creepy, all-white room, I knew I was in trouble. They told me I had imagined the whole thing, but I knew that wasn't true. I was being stalked. I had seen the microphones and the wires. I stood up with my hands handcuffed behind me, and I managed to move the doctor out of the way. I ran out of the building as fast as I could with people chasing after me. By the time I was in the woods, I was out of breath and exhausted. I wandered for hours until I found a mechanic shop on the outskirts of town. I asked a man to cut the handcuffs off me, and he did. With my hands free, I knew I had to finally get to the bottom of this. I had to get Bridget to admit what she had done. I traveled to the nearby prison where I knew she would be. I signed in as a visitor and waited in a cold, dark waiting room for her to come out. Would she even meet with me? What if she tried to hurt me? Bridget came out, looking like she had aged 20 years. I started tearing up the moment I saw her. All the emotion was just too much. She laughed at my tears like an evil person would. She kept leaning over the table, taunting me and telling me she was going to come after me. I broke down, telling her that she could stop it already. Her stalker was terrifying me, and I couldn't handle it anymore. When I said that, she looked like she saw a ghost. She revealed to me that she hadn't sent anyone after me. No one would talk to her now that she was in here. She had absolutely no connection to the world outside this prison. My heart sank. If she hadn't sent the stalkers after me, if she hadn't put the cameras in there, that meant I had another stalker. I asked her why she had been threatening me, and she told me it was because she was so angry that I reported her. I had enough of the conversation. I ran out of the room, leaving her yelling after me. I walked towards the subway in tears and called Drew. He picked up, sounded excited to talk to me. He told me he had a surprise for me and asked where I was. I told him I was on my way back to the hotel, but I was in tears. I broke down about everything. The stalker, the police arresting me, the bugs in the room. He he sounded shocked, but he tried to calm me down. He told me to just come home. We could go to the police together and he would keep me safe, even if it meant me stopping my job for a while. I felt calm for the first time in days. We would get to the bottom of this together and everything would be okay. But right before Drew hung up, I heard something from Drew's phone. It was the subway announcer, only it wasn't for our home city. It was for the city I was in. It was for the subway I was standing in front of. Before I got a chance to ask, Drew hung up. My heart fluttered. Had Drew come here to surprise me? I raced back to the hotel to meet him. But when I hurried up to the room, I saw the stalker standing outside my door. I froze. He held cameras and wires. Drew stepped out of the room, carrying more wires. I couldn't believe my eyes. Drew was behind all of this? He knew my stalker? I screamed at him and he revealed the awful truth. I stayed at work so late he was sure I was cheating. He hired the man to find out the truth, but... 
After I saw him following me in the alley, Drew changed his plan. He hired the man to try and scare me, thinking it would keep me from staying out at night or going anywhere that wasn't home with Drew. Before I left for the conference, Drew turned my location on on my phone so he could see everywhere I was going. He was convinced I had to be calling the man I was cheating on him with, so he had the investigator put wires in my pillow and cameras in my room. He had even told people at the conference to stay away from me so I wouldn't cheat with anyone else. I was shocked. He had put my business at risk and had nearly put me in a mental hospital. I told Drew that we were done and I flew home to pack up my things. Turned out, Drew was the psycho one, not me. I was loyal to him the whole time, but that jerk didn't believe me and hired a creep to stalk me. I prefer to be alone rather than with someone who doesn't trust me. So what do you think of my story? Have you been with someone crazy like my ex-fiance? Let me know in the comments down below.